Howdy y'all, I'm Stone. And I'm Morgan. And in this video, we're gonna be showing you how to assemble your Onefinity Pro Series CNC machine. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to unpack all of the boxes. That first box had our left Y rail with a drag chain. This box has our second Y rail without the drag chain, as well as all of our accessories for the machine. Here you can also see this is the controller for the machine. And we're going to cut that foam off and we'll install that later. Next, we're going to unbox our X-Rail. This is the Journeyman model, so this rail is a bit longer than the other two. When installing your foreman onto a surface other than the QCW, the supplied riser blocks are required. The foreman riser blocks ensure that the Y gantry blocks clear the table surface. Riser blocks are not included with the Woodworker or Journeyman models. After we get everything unpacked, the first thing we're going to do is place our right side Y rail on our table. It's very important to place our rail square on the table. More on that in a moment. Here we're placing the left Y rail with the drag chain. It's important to make sure that the drag chain is facing out of the cutting area of the machine. After we've placed the Y rails on the tables, we're going to manually jog the gantries to the front of each axis so that we can place our X rail on top. It's important to note that both of the Y rails are keyed on top of their gantry blocks, meaning that the tops of these gantries will interlock with the bottom of the X rail feet. As I had previously alluded to, it is very important that you set your machine up and the rails are square to one another. If your Y rails are out of alignment or not squared, you will have a parallelogram or a trapezoid rather than a square machine, causing issues when your machine moves. After we have installed our Y rails and made sure that they are aligned and squared properly, we can now place our X rail on top of our Y rails. We're going to make sure that the bottom of the feet of the X rail align with the top of the Y gantry blocks. Unlike the Y rail gantries, the X rail gantry has a flat top, making it easily distinguishable between the two. Now with all the rails roughly in place, we are going to install our X-Rail mounting bolts that secure our X-Rail to our Y-Rails. To install these bolts, we're going to use a 5mm hex key, and we're going to put two bolts in each foot on the front of the rail. Once we have all four bolts installed on the front, we are going to repeat that same process, inserting two bolts into the back of each foot on the X-Rail. On the back of the X-Rail, on the end opposite the motor, there is a piece that holds the drag chain wire in place. We're going to use a 4mm hex key to remove this piece so that we can more easily access the mounting holes for the X-Rail, again using a 5mm hex key. Once both of those bolts have been installed, we can place that piece back where it was, and we'll use that same 4mm hex key to re-tighten that bolt, securing it in place. With our X rail secured to our Y rails now, we're going to put one bolt in each of the Y rail feet. If you've ordered a QCW, these bolts will be included in that hardware, and if not, you'll use the included Y rail mounting screws from the hardware pack. With one bolt in each of our Y rail feet, we're going to push the rail back about six inches so that we can install the screen mount. The spring-loaded screen mount does have important instructions regarding the size of your screen and how to set up the mount accordingly. In this video, I'm using the 10.8 inch screen, so we're going to set the screen mount up for that. We'll start by identifying the top and the bottom of the screen mount. On the bottom front, there are two countersunk holes for our screws to go through the plastic and into the mounting arm. On the very bottom, we will find two holes for our bolts to go into. These are going to hold the plates that retain the screen onto the spring-loaded portion of the mount. We'll use a number two Phillips head screwdriver or drill to secure these in place. And we'll repeat the process on the top once we've finished the bottom. The orientation in which these plates are installed is important because it will determine which size screens fit inside of the mount. You can flip them upside down for smaller screens or like I have them here for larger ones. To install the mounting arm for our spring-loaded mount, we're going to remove the two bolts holding the front of the Y drag chain in place. We can then place the mounting arm for our spring-loaded mount on the front of the Y rail, reusing the two bolts that we have just removed to secure it in place. 
It's important not to over tighten these so we don't strip the plastic. On the other side of the mount, we'll use the two included bolts with the nylon locking nuts to secure the mount in place. And finally, moving back to the spring-loaded portion of the mount, we're going to get these screws started so that they're easier to install, but these will align with the two holes on the front of our mounting arm. Here I'm tightening down both of the knobs on the mounting arm so it stays in place while we're securing it, and as I said before, we're just going to line those two screws up and tighten them down with a number two Phillips screwdriver. And once those screws are secured, we can now install the touchscreen into the mount. As I said, I'm using the 10.8 inch screen, but this mount will work with all of our screens. With our screen in place, it's time to start connecting some of our cables. We're going to start with the M1 cable, plugging it into the M1 port on the back of the controller. This will go to the right side Y rail, plugging it at the very front of the rail. Next, we'll plug our M2 cable into the M2 port on the back of the controller, and this one will go to the left side Y rail on the front of the Y rail. Next, we're going to connect the M0 connector to the back of the controller, as well as the M3 connector to the back of the controller. M0 is going to go to our X axis, and M3 will go to Z. So, like I said, M0 will go to X, and M3 will go to Z. These are labeled on both ends of the cables. Next, we're going to insert our power plug into the power port on the back of the controller, then plug that into a wall outlet. Next, we can connect our screen using the included HDMI cable. There's also a USB-C cable that will go to the controller for touch, and an additional USB-C cable that will be used with the wall adapter brick for power. As I just mentioned, you will need to use the wall adapter brick for the power for the screen. The Raspberry Pi inside of the controller does not output a high enough voltage to support the screen. And moving back to our controller, we can plug in our HDMI cable to the HDMI out port, as well as connecting the other end of our USB-C for touch to one of the four ports on the Raspberry Pi. With all that connected, we can power on our screen, then our controller. Powering on the screen before the controller allows the controller to detect the screen and display in the correct resolution. Once our controller boots, we are going to jog the machine to the back of the cutting area. We'll use 100 millimeters and Y+. We'll use this four times on a machinist, eight times on a woodworker or journeyman, and 12 times on a foreman. By jogging the machine to the back, we are self-squaring it. We're going to use one of our five millimeter bolts to secure the Y rails in place, only placing one in each foot for the time being. After securing each of the Y rail feet with one bolt, we will jog back to the front of our machine, again four times for a machinist, eight for journeyman or woodworker, and 12 times for a foreman. With the machine jogged back to the front, we're going to use the remaining bolts and five millimeter hex key to secure the Y rails to our table. Again, if you are not using our QCW, you will use the included Y rail mounting screws. At the front of the left Y rail, we can use a four millimeter hex key once more to remove the end of the drag chain so that we can easily access the bolts. We'll use a five millimeter hex key to secure these in place. Then we'll go back to our four millimeter hex key to reinstall the bolt that holds the Z1 X1 clip for the end of the drag chains. With all of our Y rail mounting bolts installed, we can now move on to mounting our Z slider to the X gantry. We'll use the included Z slider mounting bolts to secure it in place. The Onefinity Z20 slider has four different mounting positions, giving you four inches of adjustment so that you can make sure your slider is set to accommodate whichever materials you may be using. When installing the Z20 slider, it's easiest if you place one bolt through a desired mounting hole and secure it in place. By doing so, it allows you to be hands-free as the slider will hold itself in place and also creates a pivot point so that you can line up the slider more easily with the remaining mounting holes. On the right side, we're going to install our mounting bolts in the holes that coincide with those on the left, and I'm going to manually jog the Z slider up, clearing it out of my way to make it easier to access the mounting hole that I'm after. We recommend using the lowest mounting position, the top mounting holes, if you're using the Makita router. This is so that the Makita router will reach the spoil board with shortened bits like a flattening bit. If you are using the Makita router and want to use a larger piece of material in your machine, you can always readjust this position later. Once we have our Z slider mounted to the X rail gantry, we can now plug in the wiring. 
we'll use the wire coming out of the X drag chain and plug that into our Z motor. And finally, we're going to plug in our Z2 cable from our Y drag chain into our Z2 port on the back of our X drag chain. We're also going to connect our X wire from our Y drag chain to the port on the end of the X rail in the bottom tube. Now with our machine fully assembled, we can start by turning the power to the screen on. We can then release our e-stop by twisting and pulling out, then pressing the power button on the controller. The machine will then boot, and once booted, it will ask us to home the machine. We are going to home the machine, and you're ready to start carving. Congratulations, you've just completed the assembly on your Onefinity Pro Series CNC. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good.